Hello, and this is Todd Smith. Welcome to my next tutorial. This tutorial is going to be the second part of a multi-part series. It's going to focus on the boutique series. I'm going to focus on advanced sequencing today. Uh, I, I'm not sure how similar the boutiques are across the board. I, on the sequencer, I think they're pretty much the same. So I think this is going to translate to all of them. I'm not 100% sure about that. All I own is the JU06 at the moment. But at the moment, as you can see, I built that sequence and using an, a MIDI keyboard. To the side. Uh, it's just easier. I'm going to imagine you have a MIDI keyboard. And... Uh, and you saw how I used it in the other video. So that's one reason why I made the other video. So you understand how I function. That little two minute video on site. Because I use the light still even to create something like this. I use that same idea. But I built upon it. And I'll show you kind of how I did that right now. Um, Let's go to... Let's kill everything. Now, if you have a pattern going and you want... To empty the track, you literally just empty all, all the lights. You just deleted everything. That's pretty cool. I like that part of the sequencer. It's really, it's, oh, I don't like it. Boom, click, it's gone. So now that you have an empty sequence, you kind of do, I kind of do that same thing I did before. I start an empty track. I let that light go and I kind of just play on top of it. And I'm going to play for a second and show you. Usually I'll start with something that simple. And I noticed how where where those hit. And the higher note was hitting on seven, I noticed. So then I'll kind of variate it. That's kind of where I start. So now I'm going to really focus down on where these keys are hitting. So it looked like one, five, seven, one, five, seven. simple and now you can kind of build on that if you wanted to add more parts you just put more parts more notes just kind of build upon this if you don't like it mute it out it's pretty cool
want to tie, you can actually tie a whole entire set of notes together. And it's going to tie that first note all the way to the last step that you hold. If you hold down the first note and then touch to where you want to tie it to. If I did this and hit the last note, it would tie the whole note to the whole sequence. didn't like that tie, you get rid of it. And now when you input, there's no tie. That's pretty much how I use the sequencer and how I found it's the best way to use it. It really, the more and more I use it, it takes a lot of really old school grid um, sequencing styles and really does give it some new ideas and some new functions that the more I use it, I'm, I'm really, really digging it and I can't wait to get um, the JP08 because... I'm really amped on that. Well, moving on, that's pretty much the main aspect of it, but there is something else I kind of wanted to show you guys. Something that attains the sequencer that's kind of hidden in the settings that maybe not everybody knows about. So I figured I would take a second and show you guys that. And you hold down manual, and you hit number... 15. So this is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Sorry, I had to look that up a little bit. Um, when you hit number 15, it's going to bring you to your sequencer section. Now in your sequencer mode, you have various modes. You have seven orders of of step that you can do you got okay let me read them to you you got normal which is default one where it's playing a normal sequence you got even odd reverse which is two odd only which is three even only which is four odd then even then even then odd then random is seven so you have that old school kind of like what they give you with the SQ1 on the Korg, how you can change how your sequencer works, which is pretty cool. So, like if, let's say we fill in all the notes. God knows what this is going to sound like. It's playing normal. And I'm going to hit down manual and seven, or what they call 15 down random you notice it plays like a random sequencer an old school analog sequencer so that's cool a lot of people say it didn't have poly but I think they were going with a different feel um yeah, there was a lot of complaints. There was not poly on the sequencer, but I think they were going a different route. They were trying to kind of go with that old school kind of almost SQ1 type um, sequencer for this. And so you got seven different sequencer options in there. Manual number seven when you're in sequencer mode. So I figured I'd throw that out there because that that's different sequencing options that can give you totally different effects and ideas. And with random, 
you can do some pretty cool things and then the other options too. So, well, I think this is my second tutorial. We're gonna call it quits. I showed you a good idea of how I work a little deeper rather than just watching the lights. I kind of showed you how I build upon those watching the lights. And I'm going to go even deeper into these machines and show even more tutorials and how the knobs and sliders and everything else kind of function a little bit more deeper. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe. This is Todd Smith. Thank you, YouTube. You have an amazing day.